The 1920s, a post-war era of dramatic social change, with the economy booming and the fears of war gone, this decade was titled the Roaring Twenties. This era spawned the birth of two very important women of society. These women were the Flapper Girl and the Suffragette. The Flapper Girl is probably the most well-known symbol of the 20s. A flapper was a young woman with bobbed hair and short skirts who drank, smoked, and spoke what would have been deemed unladylike. Along with this, these women were more sexually free than previous generations, making them quite taboo, especially for the century. These women represent a very early form of women's independence in their actions, making the flapper girl an iconic symbol. The first and probably most memorable step was to pluck the eyebrows. The 20s were the first time in American history that women plucked their brows, shaping them to be extremely thin and round. The goal was to draw the brow downward toward the temple, helping to accentuate the roundness of their face. Next was the pale skin, which was the fad of this decade. The main way of acquiring this look was to wear heavy amounts of powder, being sure to cover up any flaws, because being a woman was already flawed enough. You don't want to add on to that with a bad complexion. Along with the flawless canvas came the 1920s blush. Women wore shades of bright pinks on the apples of their cheeks, keeping the blush circular rather than angular. The goal, again, was the rounded face effect. Now comes the eyes. Dark eyeshadow was key, at least for the more daring girl, because obviously if you're going to wear eyeshadow, you're pretty daring. Mascara was also important to enhance lashes, as it is today. And lastly, the lips. When these women applied their lipstick, they drew their lips to be smaller than the natural outline with an enhanced cupid's bow. The goal was small and dainty, much like society's view that a woman must be small and dainty, be a contributing member of society. Your typical flapper girl was seen rocking a bob cut, such as the orchid bob, the coconut bob, the Charleston cut, the Etten crop, the shingle cut, or the most popular, the Dutch bob, which was inspired by actress Louise Brooks. The most noticeable garment of a flapper girl's wardrobe was the dress. Flapper dresses were often knee length with dropped waistlines or no waistlines at all. They were purposely shaped to hide womanly curves. I guess real men didn't love curves in this era. The shoes were most often Mary Jones with a T-bar buckle created to resemble a tap shoe. Gloves were long, usually made of satin or velvet, and were well fitted to the woman's arm. And of course, the neck piece. Flapper girls were often seen wearing long, skinny scarves, feather boas, or in this case, pearls. The flapper girl changed a woman's fashion and independence for the rest of history. Another extremely important woman of the 20s was the suffragette. This term was coined by journalist Charles Hards, which he used in a derogatory way of describing the more militant woman who campaigned for women's suffrage. However, the name was adopted by women's suffragists anyway. The true definition of a suffragette is a woman who married radical ideas with willfully conventional ideas. These women were very early examples of feminists, petitioning constantly just to give women the basic rights that men around them already had. Suffragettes wore very little to no makeup at all. If they were to wear makeup, it would be lipstick. Bright red lipstick, to be specific. These lips were a symbol of defiance with the intent of appalling men. A suffragette's signature hair did not have a specific name, but contained two key elements. The first was the fluffed border of all the hair, which was most likely teased to create volume. The second was a bun or ponytail centered at the crown of the head. The ponytail was worn, it was almost always curled. The main goal of a suffragette's wardrobe was practical clothing. Women were often seen wearing fitted blouses with small, upright collars and blues and sleeves with tight cuffs. These were seen tucked into an A-line skirt that reached to mid-calf. Over top, these women wore three-quarter length straight coats with a small collar. These items were usually neutral colors such as white, ivory, tan, and black. For shoes, the most common were black laced boots with kitten heels, however, some suffragettes also wore the tap shoe look that was seen on flappers. Hats were often brimmed with a decorative element on one side, such as flowers, feathers, bows, and or a ribbon. 
Another very common one is the cloche style hat, which was also worn by Flapper Girls, as seen previously in the video. The Flapper Girl and the Suffragette were two very different women of the 20s, but in the end, they are both extremely important women that shaped history forever.